So I, I actually wouldn't describe it as a client relationship at all. Um, I'd actually describe it as a very interesting intergenerational work experience. And I think Kara nailed it. Um, I had the opportunity to work through really putting an identity to this Love 2020. Everything from the logo to the website to collateral and materials, and you'll even see a video today. And at every step of the journey, I would be working with Paul and Phil, guys from different generations, essentially different cultures, and figuring out how we were going to communicate the gospel, how we were going to communicate love using new tools to a new generation. And it was an amazing experience to disagree, to agree, to pray for each other, love each other, and develop great relationship in the process. So I'd like to just talk about that a little bit today. In working through this, one of the first things that came to mind that is at the core and the center of everything Love 2020 is, is this idea of story. Young people today want to be able to tell their story. They're compelled by stories because it pulls them into a narrative that causes them to create good. They want to live a life that's worth telling a story about. And so if you see social media and so many different tools that people use, they're attempting to tell their story and say, look, my life is meaningful. These are the things that matter to me. I matter. And so with Love 2020, we wanted to give people the opportunity to pray and to care and to share, but to also document and tell those stories of life change. Tell those stories of the people that matter to them. So that's kind of built in and ingrained into what Love 2020 is. And the whole way that we came to that realization was through a couple of my friends. I live in Seattle, as he mentioned. I used to work for a creative agency in uh, New York, and I was a digital strategist. But I've also had the opportunity to meet some really cool people along the way. Let's make sure this thing works. And it's not working. Oh, there we go. This is my friend Cubby. Cubby's an assistant to a children's pastor in Seattle. He has a really simple, simple job, as you would say, but he's really an extraordinary man. Cubby has 120,000 followers on Instagram. And he posts photos of different landscapes, and he adds scriptures and tells stories of people that are important to him. He's actually a suggested user on this platform now. If you sign up for Instagram, people recommend that you follow him. So this normal guy who likes taking photos began telling stories of things that are important to him, taking great photos and saying, hey, I believe in Jesus, and I believe in the truth that comes from that. And if, if you could see the comments of people responding, it's amazing. A normal guy, normal young person telling his story. Cubby also has used social media and technology to start a campaign for charity water. And it's save Cubby's beard or shave Cubby's beard. <laughs> and you donate to whichever campaign you think is best. And I love this beard. <laughs> so it's another example of people finding ways to tell their story, to get you involved, to get activated. And that's a part of what social media is all about. It flattens things. It allows the individual to tell stories, to get people to interact, to have real in intentional community. So that's Cubby. This is my friend Theron. And as Kara was giving some great examples about the older generation that cares about the younger generation, I was very moved. And Theron actually has a huge heart for the older generation. He was sitting with his grandfather in, uh, in the, the backwoods of Georgia and realized that his grandfather's story was never going to be told, and that there was never going to be anyone documenting the amazing things that he did or their family vacations. So he started taking photographs of it. And he then toured the U.S. and met a new person every single day and told their story and asked questions like, what's the most valuable characteristic of your grandmother? It's another example of a young person finding meaning across generations, finding a way to tell that story and hoping that you enter into that. These are a couple of the photos of his coon hound. <laughs> and this is Grace. Grace also lives in Seattle. Grace takes a picture every day. She posts a number with that photo. And the number represents the amount of days that she's been sober. I started following her on day six. She's now on day 76. So she has her community walking with her as she finds sobriety and purity, and as she puts it, not picking up no matter what. 
It's another example of my generation trying to live out this story. So we wanted to find a way with Love 2020 to empower people, young and old, to tell these stories. Whether you have technology or not, it's really simple to pray, to care, and to share, and then if you can, to document it. Tell those stories using technology. This is the website for Love 2020. As you'll see, there's some photos in the background and some people having fun, different generations. There's a, a video that people can watch here as well, but it's all really a website where you can come and find out information if you need to, but hear me on this. This is not the end goal. Coming to visit the website is not what we're after. We want people to do something. We hope that when they come here, they learn something, acquire information, and then move forward. They go find someone to, to love. And that's what we're hoping for. If needed, people can come here and find information. They can learn about different resources, find ways to get involved. That will be here. This is a part of what the website is about. There will also be a whole section for events. If you have an event in your area, you think people should be involved, want to figure out where it's at, send an email to info at missionamerica.org, and we can get that all set up. But you'll be able to have events shown here by concerts, conferences, prayer events, community services. People can sort, um, get involved in whatever way that they may need to. So this is another example of getting them involved in what Love 2020 is. So I hope that you guys understand, as a young person, what I'm trying to advocate for. And that's this idea of us doing something here. I think Love 2020 and Mission America stand at a very interesting intersection where they're not affiliated necessarily with the denomination or any other church or organization. They're here to help support and help initiate. And if this is something that also stands at the intersection between your church and the people that attend your church, or at the intersection of all of us, it says, how do we do something now? How do we do something tomorrow? Then I think Love 2020 has done its job. Thank you.